opinion which is very popular and unpopular at the same time. We tend to be good at something with what we like. But at the same time, critics like people argue that there's a certain level that we cannot reach. And only the talent, only the more geniosity leads people to succeed in their area. Hence, truly loving, enjoying it would simply do no help. And they say, we must train hard and we must be stressed out in order to gain success. And they say, that's reality. But well, today, I'm here to talk about the special potential of really being into something. And I'll share some magical moments that I've encountered in my lifetime, and eventually, who thought, simple act of loving may as well lead to achievement. So, what does it mean to love, by the way? When we normally say the word love, I'm pretty sure most of you would have thought of an image of such cheesy romance between heroes and heroines in dramas. Or some of you might have thought of your lovers. This, I refer to love between two people in a relationship, in daily relationship, as tangible love, which is, uh, for the most of the time, impossible to begin in the first place if it's one-sided. And it often creates, radiates negative vibes. Whereas I'm here to talk about intangible love, which is quite a lot more unconditional, not sighted, while it provides healthier vibes. Intangible love may include doing hobbies, doing a deep study, daydreaming about novels and films, or even sometimes deep than girl than boy a celebrity. And I find these kinds of love quite special, and that's because for the most of the time, we do not expect any return. Ironically, when we totally forget about receiving good outputs, we're more likely to benefit from the simple act of being into. And this is how it works. We all know that it's immensely soothing to do what we love. When we meet people we like, when we eat our favorite treats, we feel huge happiness. Newer studies also support that a suitable amount of hobby time effectively relieves our stress too. But more than that, I would experience of regaining mental health through this intangible form of love. Looking back on my younger days, like when I was a small, small kid, I always wanted myself to be perfect. I wanted I to talk more elegantly, look prettier, have great self-management, and be full of confidence at every second, just like what people call that girl. And since I was so obsessed with how others would judge me, I went over sensitive, emotional, cranky, and that, in the end, ruined all the relationships with my people. And I didn't even let myself cry then, since it made me feel like a loser. And that pathological mindset made me wallow in self-hatred and self-pity for several additional years. Throughout those puberty days, I felt like I'd become a hedgehog that would basically poke everyone away, but to count the corner, would never get to love someone else, nor my own self. A few more years passed by, and I started to be interested in many different music genres, and it was rock and jazz in specific. And I happened to fall into a certain drummer boy in a rock band, and that was January 2019. During the past three years, uh, I tried my best to be, to be sincere in my emotions within this unreachable relationship. For instance, whenever this man said he was frustrated about the mistakes he made on the stage, I sent him numerous tweets and the end and thought, you don't, you don't need to be perfect every time, and such tiny things won't make you a poor person. Though perfectness was not what I expected, what I wanted from him, but I said I'd still support his goals and efforts to gain excellence. And then one day, I was writing such supportive messages as usual, and then I suddenly realized that, why have been I such a mean girl to myself, while I can be this kind? And that was how I started to treat myself in a much mature, gentle way. In other words, I was able to learn how to take care and tenderize myself by the process of loving someone another. And that was when I was 15, and I believe this was one of the most priceless accomplishments I've ever made in my whole life. Because, I see millions of people all over the world, even the very adults, still struggling and loving themselves, especially in those exhausting quarantine days. That's why I have thousands of books and songs about self-love, since it is one of the toughest assignments for us to solve. 
I got to love myself better from loving someone other that I cannot even reach. Though I do know that my experience is quite unique and I haven't seen anyone go through similar experience, yet many people gain courage and joy by their love. And I believe doing what we love is never a waste if we could find happiness there. Other than mental cures, intangible love benefits us in many different forms. And I learned this from meeting various people in my lifetime, and they in common showed me that people could be benefited by their loves in every which way. So let me introduce you some. A few years ago, I used to run a blog to upload some postings, to upload my, to upload my interests. And by writing good amount of journal three to four times a week, and under the feedback of my 300 subscribers, uh, the writing, the act of writing has became a part of my daily routine. And I'm not a professional, professional writer of what, but that experience made me, helped me find my own writing style and taught me how to write catchy posting. Most of all, I was able to recognize that writing could be a wonderfully refreshing habit to have. Also, one of a friend of mine she first fell in love with pretty little element gemstones, which led her to be into chemical elements when she was a kid. She had told me that she had memorized most parts of periodic table when she was 10. Even though she couldn't understand what those were all about, she just did that simply because she liked it. And now I hardly see her giving wrong answers in chemistry exams. That little interest became an extension to harder level, challenging level of study. Like in this mechanism, we tend to become semi-experts in the field we like. Plus, since we're familiar with the topic and we have more background knowledges, we're more likely to enjoy the process of learning, therefore become highly competitive. We have much confidence and self-efficacy compared to others who have never fallen in love with it. However, in modern society, especially in South Korea, we're often demanded to pretend love. In South Korea, especially in this, in this distorted education system, often pushes students to make up their fake interests and deceive their own ge their genuine preference in order to create a seemingly nice professional resume. Even in situations of self-introduction, I've seen so many friends telling me that they have no idea what they really like. But well, most of the time I see them, it isn't that they aren't interested in anything. In fact, they try to hide or deny their true interest just because it seems absurd or childish to show to others. Really, love has nothing to do with professionality. You may like to read romance novels instead of articles. You may want to watch handsome videos rather than not to documentaries. Although some might seem really trivial or may be funny, but if you are totally into it, the benefits will be eventually be revealed in any form, anyhow. And some might say it's a whole bunch of waste. I want to say not only the act of loving itself is valuable, but also there are returns. Everyone must have had an experience of being immersed in dinosaurs, car models, or studies once in the childhood. At the same time, Eminent revolutionists, entrepreneurs, and novel laureates were known to be real maniacs of their fields. We may, think, we may think those people were just extraordinarily gifted by luck, but see, everyone has their experience of being gone crazy about something. Those great men would have also started as maniac juniors in their childhood, and they simply knew the skill and potential of loving better than we do. So all we should do is keep trusting ourselves and believe that what I like, what I invest in, will never be in vain. And this is one of my favorite lines from a book written by a Japanese writer, Renosuke. Sometimes people devote their whole lives to desires they may not be fulfilled. However, in the end, a person who jeers at these people as folly would merely be a bystander to his own life. Born in a body of men, given thousands of options whether to like or dislike, to live a life which they seek with choice making at every second, we all deserve the chance to receive the lover.